Hey, it's Mars, and this is Let's Make a Dungeon Crawler Part 9. In this video, we'll be setting up our first enemy. So I will be using Fantasy Horde Zombie by Polygon Maker. And as I drag the model into my scene, it looks like this model comes with three versions. I will turn off two of them, so we're only using one model. And I will go to Game Object Break Prefab Instance. And now it's just a plain old game object. And I'll drag this into my project window to create a prefab. And now let's let's add some components. I will go to Play Game, Character, NPC, NPC Controller. Let's also add Play Game, Character, NPC, Movement, Nav Mesh, and Play Game, Character, Animation, Basic Mechanism Control. Now let's go to the Play Game tab and create a class for our zombie enemy. And I will add. I don't know that enemies need experience, but I'll add that just because. And a health. Let's go with 45. Now let's go to the Factions tab and create, let's say, Undead Faction. And if we click on this wheel up here, we can see the relationships between factions. So Players and Undead will be Hostile. And Undead and Players will be Hostile. Now let's see what else we need to change. In the actor component, I'll give him a screen name, change his class. So his class is not in the list. That's because I haven't applied my prefab. Let's check again. Not there yet. So I will turn the zombie off and back on with Alt-Shift-A, Alt-Shift-A. And there it is. You could also go to Play Game actors and then hit the refresh button it does take quite some time however now that we've done that let's assign let's assign our zombie to the undead faction now let's go to our npc controller component and let's turn down his run speed down to 3 and uh, a 6 will be way too fast and i'll give him in idle mode of wander and this is how far he's allowed to walk around how long he'll stay still and let's set it so he can detect the player since we're hostile to him our engaged min and max distance is how close he's allowed to get to us I'll set this to 0 and 1.5. Disengage distance. This is how far we have to run away until he'll give up and come back to this position here. I'll just use 100 and 100. Then our detection distances. I'll make it a bit small so we can sneak up on him unless he can see us. That's his forward distance. All right. The nav mesh agent looks all right. It's a bit big, so I'll make it a bit smaller. I'll change his acceleration to 100. Give him a stopping distance of 0 so that he walks until he gets to me. And I'll set the priority of his obstacle avoidance to 0. And this will help um, this will help zombies not walk through each other and help me not get through a pack of them if I was to try and run through the middle. Last but not least, let's set up our basic mechanism control. His animator will need an animator controller, so I'll right click create animator controller. And in here, we need his animations. 
So I will go to the model, and sure enough, they're inside. So I will drag in idle and walk. Now we need our parameters. Speed, forward, left, right. jump, grounded, on death, and dead. And the transition from idle to walk being having a condition of speed greater than 0.1, and I'll turn off has exit time, and the condition to transition from walk to idle being speed less than 0.1, and I'll turn off has exit time. Since we're opening our inventory and character sheet with the I key now, I went ahead and in my RPG UI scene, I disabled the buttons. I just um, I grabbed my mini menu and turned it off as I'm not using it at the moment. And then I copied my health orb over to the right side of the screen. And then I simply changed its ply blocks to update based on the mana attribute instead of the health attribute. And I just created the mana attribute and added it to the warrior class. So let's take a look at the zombie and see if everything's working properly. So it looks like he is not animating, and that is because I forgot to drop his animator controller into his animator component. So I'll do that now. Let's try again. And I'll slow him down. He seemed a bit fast there. Let's do a speed of 2. Now it looks like his walk animation is not looping. So I will go to the animation itself, which was saved in the model. Walk 1. And if I hit this edit button, it will take me to the parent model. And in the import settings on the animations tab, we can see that loop time, sure enough, is not checked. So I'll check the checkbox and hit apply. Let's try again. Now he's not turning. So let's check his turn speed is 10. Let's go with something much faster. I'll go with about 2,000. Let's try again. So this works, but you'll notice he only moves to where I was. And that's because he's using a nav mesh agent. And the nav mesh agent works off of what's called destinations. So his nav mesh agent will see that I'm standing here, the destination will be set, and he will move to that location. In the next video, we're going to make a melee attack for him, which will enable him to follow us continuously. Thank you so much for watching, and if you learned something, hit that like button. Join me next time, or we'll be setting up a melee attack for this zombie.